nut dressed as Mickey Mouse and, and Donald Duck and all of that stuff. I never had that desire to go to Disneyland. It just never. You ever went to Disneyland with you? Oh, fast. You ever been there? I've never been there. You never been there? You want to go? All right. <laughs> and I don't want to go. I don't have no desire to go. These false prophets is enough Mickey Mouse for me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and their wife are enough Minnie Mouse for me. Uh, when I travel, I'm all about God business. Yes, so I want to pull the covers off Williams and let everybody that are watching know he wants to go Pastor to Disneyland. Pastor Jennings. And who you want to see there? Pastor Jennings, we're in Indiana. <laughs> If there's anybody here want to go to Williams. <laughs> so, hey, we'll go to Florida. Okay. We was just there last week. Yes, yes. It was just in Orlando last week on God's business. Mickey Mouse wasn't there. <laughs> so we'll be getting ourselves together. We hope, God willing, Pittsburgh, we're looking at a temple in your area now. I have my secretary already went uh, last week. Look at it and check it out. It looks good. There's some place where it's more affordable. This is why certain temples can be bought quick, can be bought quicker than others. And uh, there are some places like Washington and New York. Oh my Lord, the the property is just outrageously high. Uh, this is why people are pulling on us. Open up a church here. Open up a church here. Well. We are not a multi-millionaire. We believe in rolling up our sleeves and work. But I would say this to you that make these requests as if churches can be bought on a corner candy store. Uh, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifices. And one thing we can say about the truth of God, everybody see where their money going. It's not going in my pocket. As churches are being bought and buildings are being bought, and convert it into churches for the glory of God and for your edification so you can be saved. Now it came to pass. Listen at this. In the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 24 and verse 11. All right. Now it came to now pass. Now it came to pass. That at what time the chest was brought in unto the king's office. The chest was brought in. Unto the king's office. Unto the king often. By the hand of the Levite. By the hand of the priests. And when they saw that there was much money. When they saw there was much money. The king's scribe and the high priest officer came and emptied the chest. And what? And took it and carried it to its place again. Yes. Thus they did day by day. Yes. And gathered money in abundance. Yes. And the king and Jehoiada gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord. Do you see that? That's the way we use the Lord's money. That's right. That we may do the work of the service. Of the house of the Lord. Of the house of the Lord. And hired masons. And what? And hired masons. That's what we have to do. That's right. We hire masons. And carpenters. We hire carpenters. To repair the house of the Lord. And it's wonderful that we have those men and women in the church with those skills. So the workmen wrought. So the workmen wrought. And the work was perfected by them. That's the way I am. That's right. I'm a perfectionist when it comes to the work of God. I don't believe right. and just we coming in and coming into a bunch of junk. And I don't believe God house be gaudy. That's right. I believe it should be beautiful and kept clean at all times. That's right. So the word of God can be preached. That's right. So we're not taking church money to buy me cars and houses. I buy my own house. That's right. And buy my own car and work with my own hands and kill you with God's word at the same time. Same time. Amen. It's not like these other preachers who get under a spell from hell. God said, buy me a, a plane. Can you imagine me getting over the air? <laughs> Closing my eyes and telling the people, the Lord says, buy me a plane. Somebody will go somewhere at the Walmart and probably buy me a model. That's as close to a plane that I will own. So we believe in using the Lord's money for the people of God. That's right. Amen. So the people of God can wish up God. All right, let's dive into the Bible. Let's get open the book of pain. Hey Amen. Let, let, did the Lord give you anything this morning, William? <coughs> no, let's go to work in the Bible. <laughs> Taking too long for you to ask. Pastor Jennings, I have Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Yeah, nine. you have Ecclesiastes. Well, That's right. You said it right. 
<laughs> you said it right. Notice he didn't say the Lord gave it to him. He said, I have. The Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Amen. I agree with you. Amen. Let's see what's in there for Brother Williams. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and at verse 11. All right. Let's have it. I returned and saw under the sun. Yes. That the race is not to the swift. Wonderful. The race is not to the swift. It's not given to those that is in a hurry. Nor the battle to the strong. Nor the battle to the strong. Neither yet bread to the wise. Not bread to the wise. Nor yet riches to men of riches understanding. Riches to men of understanding. Nor yet favor to men of skill. Yes. But time. Time. And chance. Chance. Happeneth to them all. Happeneth to them all. Amen. Time determines your survival skill in God. That's right. It doesn't matter how much you shout, how long you testify, how loud you talk, how loud you yell, how much you say. That's right. Time. Time and chance. And chance. Happeneth to them all. Time determines whether you're going to stick with God or leave him. That's right. Whether you're going to be faithful to God or turn on him. That's right. It is not determined how often you come to church. No. Anybody come to church. No. Roaches come to church. That's right. And make babies in the church. That's right. That's why it's hard to get rid of them. Amen. So you coming to church doesn't prove nothing. The question is, what is your agenda? What is your purpose? What is your objective for coming? Do you come to see your friend? Do you come because somebody invited you? Do you come to hear a choir? Do you come to hear music? The greatest part of worship is the message. If the message is wrong, the whole worship is no good. See, I'm not the type of person, well, I enjoy the choir. The choir can't be no better than the message. Because for the God of heaven to properly be praised, worship, recognized in church, I must be taught how to worship him, how to praise him, how to give him recognition where he and only him will accept even if everybody enjoyed the sound. Give that doesn't mean God enjoys or get pleasure out of what's being done. Right. All right, what do you have? In the book of Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 9. Yes. Give instruction. Listen to this. Give instruction to a wise man. Give instructions to a wise man. And he will be yet wiser. He'll be wiser. Teach a just man. Teach an honest man. And he will increase in learning. He will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord. The fear. And that's what left church now. The fear of God is gone. That's why the churches are upside down. That's right. The fear of God is gone in the pulpit. That's why any piece of junk is preached from the pulpit. That's right. The fear of God is gone from the choirs and musicians. That's why rap is in the church. R&B is in the church. Clubbing is in the church. That's right. So if you take the fear that children normally will have towards mother or father, discipline, fear, respect. When that leave a household, what do you think will happen to the household? <clears throat> every foul thing, every ungodly thing that the parents used to stand against, now they will allow. Boyfriend, girlfriend can spend the night there. Smoking can take place. Drinking can take place. Because the fear is no more. Me and my wife have seven kids. Four boys and three girls. All my boys now is taller than me. But the taller they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> it is no way you're going to come up under my roof and grab me by my collar. 
And plain turns from the hood, homie don't play that. <laughs> yeah, I have the gospel, and I was made a preacher. But I still know how to bring you down to the lowest common denominator under my roof. That's right. I'm not so holy, I'm stupid. That's right. Are you getting what I'm talking? That's right. Now, I'm not out there in the street swinging my hands. Even though I meet some people, I would love to put them in check. <laughs> but I can't do that. But when you under my roof and rise up, then I got Bible authority to bring you back down. Are you listening? The fear of the Lord. The fear, the respect, fear have more than one meaning. Someone say, well, the Bible said God has not given us the spirit of fear. That's a different type of fear. Fear means honor, reverence, respect. When the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, we should not fear no one but him. You see, we should fear what he can do to us. I mean, think of it. He knows all things. He don't have to find you. You don't have to figure you out. You're not that deep. Yeah. Until the prophet said about God, darkness and light are equal to him. Look at what we do. We turn the lights out. Oh, man, be quiet. They don't see us. They don't hear us. Man, you can't hide from heaven. No he see us all the time. He saw you before you was born. Right. He knew you before your mother was even pregnant with you. The Bible said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I knew thee. I knew thee. So everything about us, God knows. Even how we're going to die, when we're going to die, and where we're going to die, and the cause of death. Oh, Lord, thou hast searched me. It's, it's scary when you think of it. I had one of my brothers, one of the elders uh, from North Carolina, called me last week. Because this one elder, uh, he told him about us. He was an elder believing women preachers and all that stuff. He was telling him, hey, look, you, you got to listen to Pastor Dennis. Hear what he's preaching. So the fellow did hear us and whatnot, and he knew he needed made a change. And the preacher died last week in the pulpit. Uh. You know, it's frightening because was that last message up to par? Was that last message, did you lie on God at any time? Did you mislead the people one last time? Did you lie on the scriptures? If the last words that come out of your mouth is a biblical transgression, that's your end. Because to get into the kingdom of God, he spoke plain that he going to present to himself a glorious church, and I must be careful how I even quote that. For years, preachers have said, and I'm pretty sure you heard them, when Jesus come, he's coming back looking for a church. The Bible ain't never said that. No. And the Bible don't teach that. No. When you look for something, you lost it. Yeah. He ain't looking for a church. No. He gonna present to himself a glorious church. A glorious church. He already know where the church is. He didn't lose it. Right. He ain't got to find it. No. He said, upon this rock I built my church. So he's coming for the same thing he left here. Right. All right, son, let's have it. Back in Proverbs 9 and verse 10. What is it? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord must come back among the church. That's right. Until that happened, you will see chaos as you see it now from one end of the world to the other in churches. That's right. Preachers don't even preach with conviction. No. They don't even preach with fear or conviction. They don't preach under the inspiration of the Almighty that would make a man or a woman even think, I need to stop this. That's right. I need to change from that. I had many people. Con In fact, I was talking to a brother last night. Now, told, gave me his testimony from the North Chicago. He goes to the North Chicago temple now. 
He said, I, I just had to meet you face to face. I drove here from Chicago. I want to briefly give you my testimony. He said, I was a big time drug dealer. And uh, the police came after us and raided our place one day where the drugs were stashed. And you know how they uh, put cocaine in these uh, sometimes little balls of plastic. He said, man, I was so determined not to get caught, I swallowed five of those bags. He said, and God just kept me that I didn't die. He said, and then we was riding one day, me and my brothers and us, and they was in behind the shooting, and my brother got shot and got killed, and everybody thought it was us. But it was himself that got killed. He said, so in my indulgence out there, I was wild and crazy. He said, till one day we heard the message. And he said, the message of holiness is what saved my life today. He said, now, Pastor Jennings, I'm living for God, and this is the best time of my life. I talked to another brother, older brother, last night. He gave me his testimony. He said, I was a Hebrew Israelite. He said, I couldn't stand you. <laughs> He said, one day I turned you on over the air. He said, you see the gray in my face and you was preaching against dying your hair and dying your bed and out here acting like a fool. He said, man, I cussed at the television and turned you off. And I said, well, who do you think you are? He said, because you was literally talking direct to me and I took it personal. And everybody should take what the Bible say personal. <laughs> Besides brushing it off on somebody else, don't pass the buck. Take it personal. That's right. Because when the Lord come, he is going to deal with each individual personal. That's right. And he said how he cussed me out and didn't like it until one day he made it up in his mind, I'm going to listen at what he's saying. And he said that changed his whole direction. It went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ, and he's tarrying and seeking the Lord for the Holy Ghost. So the Lord have given everyone a testimony who chose to walk according to his word. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Is the beginning of wisdom. You wise when you fear your creator. That's right. You a fool when you make mockery of him. That's right. Give chapter and verse again, Williams. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 9 and verse 10. Yes. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. And the knowledge of the holy. The knowledge of the holy. Is understanding. Once you get knowledge of what the Lord revealed to his holy prophets and the holy apostles. And seeing left on record to the Bible says whatsoever things were written aforetime. It's written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The reason why I would not disrespect my mother and father, there was a certain amount of fear, reverence, honor that I gave them. That's right. The reason why the world is like it is now, they don't fear God. They don't reverence God until they're so foolish, they rather rule out the existence of God. Sure. Some folks say, well, I'm a Christian. What is your definition of being a Christian? Going to church on Sunday? Why, that make bugs Christians. That's right. If your best definition of being Christ-like is going to church, you haven't even started. That's right. Anything and anybody can go to a church. That's right. But very few want to be like Christ. That's right. To be like Christ is a life of self-denial. Always honoring and submitting to the Spirit of God that bears the title Father. That's right. And it is not in the human family to reverence God. That's why in many of our lives, God has to bring something rough yeah. to really shake up your house. Make you see you're not as bad or tough as you think you are. You're not as cute as you think you are. You know, nobody can break you like heaven could. 
In the scriptures, I believe in the book of Daniel, there was a king, Nebuchadnezzar. And he exalted himself. And he made a statement, is this not great Babylon I have built. that I, I have built? I have built. Glorying in his materialism. This is the way many of us in the world now, we are materialistic junkies until our house, cars, money, women, women. And men have became our gold, our God, our prize. That's right. So now God is at the bottom of the totem pole. Or in our lives today in the world, he don't even exist. In the book of Daniel chapter 4 and verse 28. Real quick. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. All this. You better go above that to about 25. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 25. Come on, son. That they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the Ah, uh, 18. Verse 18. Yes. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. This dream. He saw his downfall in the dream, and he didn't understand it. Now thou, O Belteshazzar. And he had to call for wise men. That's right. Magicians. Soothsayers. I believe Chaldeans and astrologers right. to try to read the writing that came on the wall. Yeah. Listen at this. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have This seen. dream. You know, he saw the uh, watcher and the tree was hewn tree. down and the only thing was left there was a stump. That's right. All right. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. You know one thing about a stump, that means it's hope. Yeah. Are you getting me? That's right. You can cut a tree down, but don't grind the stump. That's right. And you, over a period of time, you'll see weeds yeah. growing back on the stump. So, and God will remove the king, cut the tree down, meaning get rid of his greatness. That's right. Leave him the stump, meaning he will give him another chance. Nevertheless, leave the stump. <laughs> Hear this. In the book of Daniel, chapter 4 and verse 15. All right. Nevertheless, leave the stump of Nevertheless. You, you better go up above that, son. It's just too good to get fragments of it. Daniel, chapter 4. We'll start at verse 8. Real quick. But at the last Daniel came. Daniel came. But at the last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar. Was named Belteshazzar. According to the name of my God, and in, in whom is the spirit of the Holy God. Yes. And before him I told the dream. All right. Saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians. Yes. Because I know that the spirit of the Holy Gods is in thee. Yes. And no secret troubleth thee. No secret trouble. Tell yet. me the visions of my dream. Tell that me I the had visions seen. of my dream that I looked and at. And the interpretation thereof. Yeah, make it plain to me. That's where the visions of my head in my bed. Yes. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth. I saw now. Hmm. He saw himself, but he didn't know it was himself. That's right. I saw a tree in the midst of the earth. And the height thereof was great. That let you know how his power was explosive. That's right. Far reaching. Mm -hmm. The height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong. He was prosperous. The king was very prosperous. And the height thereof reached unto heaven. Reached into heaven. And the sun That means heaven recognized mm -hmm. the greatness of the king because heaven was responsible for his greatness. And the Look at America. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They are great and prosperous. And the greatness of America have reached into the heavens. Because you cannot be great without God's permission. Are you listening? That's right. But just as Nebuchadnezzar got to a certain point where he no longer recognized God as God. That's right. Oh, glory to God. That's right. Hear me good, politicians. Hear me good, Democrats and Republicans. Hear me good, you mega church false prophets out there. That's right. You materialistic junkies that have so much until you say, I got this on my own. That's right. When you barely had anything. 
You know, some folk, when they was barely making it, they may not didn't know God, but they was praying to the higher power who was God. That's right. They was very humble. Some people are humble when it's from hand to mouth. But uh, when they get so high, like some children, yeah. they may start a business and make more money than their mother and father put together. And then they treat their mother and father like they don't have a mother and father, forgetting that mother and father got them where they are. Yeah. Got them through school, helped them get their apartment, signed the lease because the children's credit was no good. That's right. And then they forget their mother and father. And then later on, let me teach you about the wisdom of God. The Bible says the ways of the Lord are strange. You will pray and ask God, give me this. Here, let you do it. Give me that. Give me the other. And then he'll give it to you because he said how the Lord reigned upon the just and the unjust. And he already know in advance how you would treat the things you ask for and how you would treat him. And many that are watching and maybe some that are here are students of this lesson. God will let you climb the ladder of prosperity. And you're so stupid, Amen. I have to make it just that plain. That's right. That you get at a certain height you're blinded by the prosperity of what you have. And you forgot the ones that helped you get there, pray that you get there, fast that you get there, work along with it that you get there, and by the help of Almighty God, you got there. Your head and your nose are stuck in the clouds so far. Now everything I do this. That's right. I do that. I do the other. You cease to recognize God for getting you there, giving you the strength to make it. That's right. And then the mighty hand of God reached down from heaven and make everything you have fall up. That's right. I liken it unto a fire. It takes years. For many trees to grow. Overnight, it can be burnt down. That's right. I look at all the thousands following the truth of God around the world. You couldn't pay me money in the world to say, this is my church. No way. This is the work that I'm doing on my own. Yeah. I don't need God help no more. You, I, I'm not stupid. I'm not a passenger on a miniaturized yellow bus. That's right. Riding stupidly, ignorantly. You preachers have gotten so high and so prosperous, you don't even find it necessary to even preach the Bible no more. That's right. God or hell is no longer a subject of importance in church. That's right. Look at the message in church. Money, house, cars, prosperity. Not live right. Not live holy. Not live sanctified. Not fear God. Not you'll go to hell that don't exist. That's right. Preachers used to preach it when they had little storefront churches. But the church was next door to an ice cream parlor. Amen. Or next door to a bar. But when it went from 25 people to 25,000. Oh, yes. Even the preacher apparel change. When he had a storefront church, he made all modest colors. Black or beige or blue suit or gray. Now, he come out like the four tops. That's right. <laughs> Blood red suits. That's right. Yellow shoes. Got a big old hat with a peacock tail. That's right. Meat coats and the preachers dress with more mink than his wife. Amen. 
rings on every finger. He's a, he got more bling bling than these chandeliers up here. <laughs> His robe is covered in rhinestones. These men are not representatives of God. They are nothing but entertainers disguised as preachers. That's right. They love to mingle with celebrities because they themselves want to be a celebrity. They want the notoriety. They want the fame. And none of them want to be known for standing for God. That's right. They want to be known for getting rich. Many that are here that may be in their 50s or 60s or 70s, remember so-called Reverend Ike? Oh, yes. Mr. Ike and Coder. Ike and Coder. Massive church he had in New York. His ceiling was painted in 24 karat gold. He had a slogan, you can't lose with the stuff I use. He admired little Richard so much, he looked just like him. Yeah. So when the fear of the Lord leaves church, and it has, oh, yes. this is the reason why you see church like it is 